an entire world is ready for you to start your career teaching the path to wellness. Mastering the science of mindfulness and the art of coaching. To help clients achieve mental, emotional, and physical betterment of life. Through movement, nutrition, recovery, and regeneration. Because impacting one person impacts a family. Impacting a family impacts a community. And impacting a community impacts the world. Become an NASM certified wellness coach. You're listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie winner of the Share Care Emmy Award for Social Storytelling and the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie. Today, I'm going to continue on with a series that we've kind of been working through on hypertrophy which is muscular development, the increase in size or the increase in volume in skeletal muscle. And so this one, uh, I think is pretty interesting. I'm going to point out some research, but I do want to point out also that there are not a lot of research subjects in these. And so we may need to consider this, but not necessarily put it as law until we get a little more information about it. But it is exercising or working out our muscles in a long position versus in a shortened position. So what we're looking at is kind of leaning towards a lengthened position under load can potentially increase your hypertrophy. So that last 120 degrees of elbow extension and a bicep curl is going to get you more bang for your buck potentially than as you curl up and you're at the top of the curl. Well, that's a lot of passive resistance up at the top. Well, that makes sense. But we're going to show some other things. We're going to start off with a study that was published in 2021 uh, by Mayo et all greater hamstring muscle hypertrophy uh, that happens long versus short muscles. And what they did is they compared the prone hamstring curl to the seated hamstring curl. So the prone is where you're lying down. Your hips are fully extended and then you bend your knees. However, a seated hamstring curl, I got I to gotta admit my tight hamstrings, I just sit in the seated hamstring curl. And if it doesn't recline back a little bit, then that actually gives me a little nervy stretch. So that is a stretched position for the hamstrings. And so what they did is they compared that stretched position in the seated hamstring curl to the prone position curl. They, uh, they took 20 uh, healthy adult males seated with one leg. They did the prone curl and then the, uh, sorry, seated position with one leg and the prone curl with the other leg. 70%, not at the same time. Not They weren't on one machine, half the body, right. So what they did is they 70% of the one rep max, five sets, 10 repetitions, two times a week for 12 weeks. And here's what they found. Here is a quote, training induced increases in muscle volume were greater in the seated versus the prone leg for the whole hamstrings. So seated increased for the, for the whole hamstrings, 14% versus the prone, which was an increase in volume of 9%. And each biarticular uh, muscle, but not the monoarticular muscle of the hamstring group. What biarticular means what? Bi is two, articular means joints. So the muscles that cross two joints, but there don't all the hamstrings cross two joints? Yes, except for one part of one muscle. And that is the short head of the biceps femoris. That is a mono monoarticular joint or a one joint muscle. And it didn't seem to change the length in that hamstring muscle in the, the short head of the biceps fem. And why would it? Why would it? it? It really isn't affected any differently one way or the other what goes on at the hip because all it does is cross the knee. So... There's an increase in, in volume and the size of muscle based off of this. So seated hamstring curl based off this study, only 20 subjects though. So don't go crazy. Don't think, ah, oh, this, is, this is the answer. Yeah. Stay tuned though. 
Kubo et al. 2019, the effects of squat training with different depths on lower limb muscle volumes. So what they did is they compared a half squat range of motion with a full squat range of motion. 17 males, 10 weeks, two times per week they trained. And here's what they found. The knee extensors in both groups increased their size. So the full squat, 4.9. The, the half squat, 4.6. All right, no real difference there. But there was no change. There was no change in the size of the rectus femoris or the hamstring in either of these groups, really. But the adductor increased 6.2% in a full squat versus 2.7% in the, the half squat. The glute max increased 6.7% in volume in a full squat versus 2.2% in the half squat group. So a quote from this in conclusion, the results suggest that full squat training is more effective for developing lower limb muscles, excluding the rectus femoris and the hamstring muscles. So our adductors and our glutes is what it's saying. All right. Well, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. There's more. Mao et al. So Mao, he also did the, the previous study. So this is triceps brachii hypertrophy. And we're looking at two different types of tricep extensions. One, the overhead cable tricep extension versus the regular neutral cable tricep extension. Five sets of 10 reps, two times a week for 12 weeks. Changes in muscle volume in the long head. So going overhead was increased in muscle volume 28.5% versus the regular uh, neutral grip position at 19.6%. 28.5% is a lot greater than 19.6%. So that's, a, that's quite significant. Uh, that's a difference in volumes in the long head of the tricep. Now, the lateral and medial heads the overhead group increase in percentage and volume was 14.6% versus 10.5% in the neutral group. So the total change, when you combine them together, the overhead increased volume, overhead tricep cable extension, 19.9% increase versus the neutral grip with 13.9% increase. Here's a quote from the study. Triceps brachii muscle hypertrophy was substantially greater after cable elbow extensions training performed in the overhead position than in the neutral arm position, particularly in the biarticular, two joint, biarticular triceps brachii long head, even with lower absolute loads lifted. Why were there lower absolute loads lifted? Because it is much harder to lift a weight in that lengthened position, in that overhead position, than it is to do a tricep press down, a tricep extension, in that regular neutral position that we normally see it done. So the, the lower loads are because you just can't lift that much in that position. And even with the lower loads, there was greater hypertrophy. All right, that's pretty interesting. But now we have kind of a, a, a kick in the pants here because it's a review of literature. And this is Nunez et al. And this is what Nunez says. And, and this is one of kind of the conclusions because there's a lot of things that are discussed in this article about hypertrophy. And one of them is lengthened positions. So short versus long positions, lengthened posi positions. It is says that limited evidence suggests that when stretching is done with a certain degree of tensile strain, particularly when loaded, or added between active muscle contractions may elicit muscle hypertrophy. But it says there's limited evidence. Well, basically what I did is I found those limited evidences. I found the evidences and pointed them out, but those are three studies. And with all three of those studies together, there are three different kind of muscle areas. Yet, it's like, it's less than 60 people. So the jury is still out. But here's what I suggest. I suggest variety. I suggest training in long positions and training in short positions. And if you're looking for hypertrophy, maybe focus more on the long positions because it ain't wrong and it may be right. 
However, this is just about hypertrophy. We're not looking at muscular performance. So sorry, we're not looking at performance. So for instance, if I want to jump higher, then there's research that shows that deep squats are not the best for me focusing on jumping higher. Because when I jump, I don't take my running step and then drop down into a deep squat and jump up. That's not how we jump. So if you're looking for performance outcomes, this isn't what the focus of this is about. This is about hypertrophy focused only. And with that said, the jury is still out. I think get some variety. You know, I like the um, uh, I like the the seated hamstring curls. I like the prone hamstring curls. I like uh, RDLs, and that's that's a pretty significant lengthened position that you would be in. Uh, there are a lot of things that I think are good. I also like that you, in an RDL, you're focused on a lengthened position, primarily hip dominant versus a seated position, a seated bicep, uh, by, um, hamstring curl, where it is the knee, the joint at the knee that's doing the work versus the, at the hip. There's a lot of variety to be had. And the jury's still out on which lengthened position is the best, or if lengthened positions are at all better than shortened positions. But there are three studies there that we reviewed that might give you a little bit of insight, might find interesting, and might have you training perhaps just a little bit differently. And if nothing else, providing a little more variety in the lengthened position than you may normally do. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate it. Share the podcast with your fitness friends and family. Uh, training managers, personal trainers, and fitness adjacent folks. Uh, give us a, a, a rating. So like, subscribe, share, all that stuff. But those comments that you leave, they're really appreciated. So I, I thank you so much for that. If you got questions for me, you want to reach out, you can do so. Uh, you can hit me up on Instagram at dr.rickritchie or you can email me, rick.ritchie at nasm.org. Thank you so much for listening. Keep inspiring people to fitness. This has been the NASM CPT Podcast.